I made a first person view 3D renderer in the 2D Python library. Here's how I did it. I started working on this a couple of months ago. First, I implemented it so points in 3D space could be drawn on the screen, because that's the whole point of a 3D renderer. Here's a quick explanation of how it calculates where a point needs to appear on the screen. When you move the camera, all the points move around the camera, so it first needs to calculate where the point is in 3D space. When the camera rotates, it uses rotation matrices to rotate the point around the camera. Then, it uses a projection matrix to calculate the coordinate in 2D and it draws it on the screen. You can control the camera by using W, A, S, T, Shift and Space. To rotate, you can simply use the mouse like in most first person view games. You can also pause the renderer by pressing S and sometimes when you're looking too far down or up, you can get upside down. So to reset your rotation and position, you can simply press R. After that, I started to work on a system to easily summon objects using code. Objects like cubes, cuboids, planes, polygons and images. The only thing is, for now, it's way too slow. It can easily render one cube at a high frame rate, two cubes and 64 cubes. At 125 cubes, it starts to slow down. So when I got to 216, it really started to lag, and 343 cubes barely got 3 frames per second. That's also kind of logic, because 343 cubes are 2744 points that it needs to calculate per frame. I started searching for 3D rendering optimizations, but it's not easy to find one. After searching for a long time, I stopped working on the project, and here we are now. You may be asking yourself, well, why are you telling this whole thing while you stopped working on this for months? The answer to that question is, because I'm going to start working on it again, right now. Here's what I want to do in this devlog. First of all, I want to use OpenCV instead of Tkinter. Why? Because then I can save images and videos of the rendered footage instead of real time. Then I can also summon transparent objects and the kinder doesn't like to go with threading. That brings me to, to my second goal, threading. I want to make it so multiple calculations can happen at the same time. Will it work? I don't know, but we'll soon find out. And finally, I want to be able to add multiple cameras in the scene and do cool stuff with them in the future. Saving the rendered footage will probably be something for later. Knowing what I did and what I want to do in this video, let's start. I'm going to change the setting a bit for this one. I started by creating a Trello list. Then I split the project into multiple files so you can import it as a module and so it's more readable. The hardest thing about this step was making sure all the files communicate with each other and that they could share variables. Then I made sure that there weren't any magic numbers. I found one. If you don't know, a magic number is a seemingly arbitrary or unique value that appears in the code which could preferably be replaced with named constants. 
Next, I changed everything from Tkinter to OpenCV. Didn't work immediately, there were some problems, but eventually got it working. I quickly noticed that the frame rate was lower when I used OpenCV. I was still a little bit hopeful, so I tried to add threading, but that also didn't really help with the performance. So I changed everything back to Tkinter, because that was faster after all. But, of course, I kept the version of OpenCV as a copy, just in case. I also removed the threading, because it only slowed it down. Because I changed it back to the Kinter, I couldn't really use transparent objects, but I cheated a bit by using a stipple option. After that, I made it so you can add multiple cameras in one scene. You can turn them on and off, choose whether you want to display them, and yes, you can display multiple cameras at the same time. You can also choose which cameras you want to be able to control. Maybe in the future I'll make an option to choose which keys control what. Afterwards, I made it so cameras are visible in 3D as a box for other cameras. The hard thing was making sure that it only displayed the box for other cameras and not for the camera that's displaying. There was a thing that looked weird with it though. The camera didn't rotate, so you were not able to see which direction the camera was looking in. Therefore, I created a rotate function. This honestly took me way too long. It just didn't work and after a lot of testing I realized that it had to do with the Y value. I had to change it to negative instead of positive. I added a delete function to object as well as a way to make objects invisible and visible again. Thereafter I made it so when no camera is selected to display there is a black screen. And finally I fixed some bugs and optimize some things to get a better frame rate. I know, very anticlimactic. I wanted to add some more things, but because I likewise wanted to get this video out, I'm going to leave that for the next time.
I'm happy with how much I managed to do in two days. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like. Also, according to YouTube statistics, less than 30% of you are subscribed. So make sure that you are subscribed and click the bell icon to get notified when a new video gets out. In the next video, I'll show you how you can use a 3D renderer so you can play around with it and use it to make your own projects in 3D. The link to the GitHub repository is already in the description for if you want to try it out. If you have a question, tips about what I could do better, or if you would just enjoy the video, leave a comment. I would greatly appreciate it. Next week, school starts again but it will be homeschooling, so I probably won't be able to upload weekly. But when I'll upload, it will be on a Sunday at 7pm GMT plus 1. I hope I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye!